This is section 2.8, Derivatives, Content Objective 3, where we are going to examine f prime and think of it as an instantaneous rate of change. And when we do this, we are interested in exploring the units of f prime. So by the time we're done, I'd like you to be able to explain how you determine the units of a derivative in any sort of an application problem. So the first application that I'll expect you to work with is in those involving particle motion and in particular we're going to work with speed. Now speed is the absolute value of the velocity and unlike velocity it has no direction associated with it. So I could be running toward my house or I could be running away from my house and as long as the speed is the same the direction does not matter. With example one, we're given the position of a particle by this equation s of t, where t is measured in seconds and s is measured in meters. I want to find both the velocity and the speed at t equals 2. I can find the velocity at 2 by remembering that the velocity is the derivative of the position function at 2. And then I can use the definition of the derivative as the limit as h approaches 0 of s of 2 plus h minus s of 2 over h. If I plug 2 plus h into the function, I will get a 1 over a 1 plus a 2 plus h, and then I'm going to subtract what I get when I plug in a 2, which is a 1 third. All of that will be divided by h. Remember from our previous examples that I'm going to make this complex fraction look better by multiplying by the reciprocal of h and by getting a common denominator. If I look at this first fraction, I'm going to need a 1 third, or 3 over 3. And if I look at my second fraction, I'm going to need that factor of a 3 plus h, which is the 1 plus 2 plus h. If I multiply this out now, smart choice for 1. If I multiply this out now, I'll end up with the limit as h approaches 0 of a 3 minus a 3 minus an h over that 3 plus h and a 3 and an h. If I've done this properly, everything on the top that doesn't have an h in it should disappear, and then I can factor and reduce. So this will be the limit as h approaches 0 of a negative 1 over a 3 plus h times a 3 we can see that that limit ends up being 1 ninth, and so the speed will be the absolute value of that negative 1 ninth, or 1 ninth. With example 2, we have a manufacturer that produces bolts of fabric with a fixed width, and his cost is going to be C of X, where X represents the number of yards that have been produced. So if we think graphically about this, we can have x, which is measured in yards, and it's going to produce some function c of x, where c of x is measured in dollars. So if I want to talk about the derivative or the instantaneous slope at any point x, then that slope is going to have a rise that is measured in dollars and a run that is measured in yards. So that c prime of x will be the rate at which production cost is changing, and it will be measured in dollars per yard. So in practical terms, when I say C prime of 1,000 equals 9, it means if 1,000 yards have been produced, that's an N, then it will cost about $9 to make the thousand and one-th yard. What this does is it has a predictive effect. It tells us if I've already made this much, then if I go over one yard, then I'm going to go up the slope of that tangent line, which is our C prime of x. So if I've made a thousand, then going over one yard is going to take my cost up nine dollars. 
So which do we think is greater? The cost that it's going to take to create the sixth, the cost that it's going to take to produce the 501st yard, or the cost that it's going to take to create the five, th five millionth and one. So why? I would say that this one is probably the greatest. And the reason I think this one is the greatest is that producing five million yards of fabric, I'm going to start running into resource issues. I'm going to run out of wool. I'm going to run out of room in my manufacturing plant. I'm going to run out of people willing to work night shifts, weaving, weaving whatever the fabric requires. So when we have too many units produced, the cost is going to go way up just like the cost when we have very few units produced is also going to be pretty high because at the beginning we have all those startup costs of creating a factory, hiring laborers, training people, establishing our resource links for the raw materials, etc., etc. So we'd have high values in the beginning and we'd have high values way out at the edges but the stuff in the middle is when we've already got our production up and running and now it's just leveling out and we're getting more and more efficient. We don't start gaining cost again until we run out of resources. The third and final example for this section is let D of T be the US national debt at time T. And here's our table below that gives the approximate values of this function by providing end of year estimates. So I want to interpret and estimate the value of D prime of 1990. So D prime is a derivative. It is a tangent slope. And remember when we have data, we are going to compute a tangent slope by looking at the flanking points. So I would be determining the output minus the output over the input minus the input. So on my calculator that will equal approximately and let me go look that up 302.81 and now we need to think about the units. Notice that debt was billions of dollars so this will be billions of dollars per, we divided by time, and this was measured in years. So how would we interpret this? This says in 1990 the national debt was growing, because notice that rate is positive, at a rate of 302.81 billion dollars per year. So to end this section I want you to be able to explain how you determine the units of the derivative in application problems. What is it that we did to create that billion per year or the dollars per yard? Think about that process and be able to explain it.